Hey everybody, I uh, just want to do a little bit more with the gradient descent thing before we uh, turn the page on that topic. Um, we went through a 1D example and then extended to multiple dimensions, but what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about coding. Um, uh, short lecture here, but let's get started. So, um, yeah, this is a topic on coding a basic gradient descent scheme, and it's really not that... Uh, that out of hand, right? We have all of the different ingredients that we have used in, um, you know, other schemes and other logic. And here, I'm even going to provide you with um, a flowchart as well as some source code. So what are the things that we need? Well, uh, it's not very complicated. You need to initialize the function. There's no way that we're going to be able to code gradient descent for a certain function if we don't know what the function is. Uh, symbolic functions are especially helpful here as we can easily calculate derivatives which are going to be very useful for this in MATLAB. Um, so we're iterating a process again and again. That sounds like a loop to me. And then we're going to apply a scheme. So uh, if we have two independent variables, we're going to need to know how to do partial derivatives. And we talked a little bit about this in a lab a few, a few weeks ago. Um, but here is some uh, uh, notation for you here that you could use to work with. So we have the diff command, and you just use two commands to tell you what to differentiate and what you want to differentiate with respect to. Um, yeah, the new point we get to must be an improvement, or else we have to be able to step back and try something else, right? So we have to check F evaluated at the new point to ensure that it is a better estimate than the last. If not, we... Um, we throw away. We throw away that new point, we make h smaller and try again. So we want to be a little bit careful before we define our next estimate, because we want it to be a better estimate before we make that um, the next thing that we step to. So we got to do some checking, some checking, some checking before um, we do lead to that. And when we do, it's got to be to something that is uh, smaller than we were, assuming that we're doing a minimization problem. Of course, this entire conversation is also valid if we were doing a maximization problem. It's just that most of the time we're trying to minimize some sort of error or something like that with regards to gradient descent uh, schemes. So oftentimes what we're trying to do is minimize. Uh, maximization just requires a couple of little changes that would make some sense. And then you repeat the process again and again. And you typically do that until your estimates are really not changing much to within some tolerance like a millionth or whatever the scale of the problem is, we'll, de we'll determine that. So let's look at this. Uh, it's a flow chart here. And, um, you know, this is a, really where we're starting. It's just kind of putting what we just talked about into a, kind of a graphical format here. But we want to initialize first. Uh, we have symbolic variables, the function f of x and y, and our starting step size of h. I'll typically use like a current X and a current Y that give me a, a, the current point I'm at, and that's going to be what updates as we go along. All right. So um, once you've got the functions, we'll need to find partial derivatives so we can construct that gradient. That's what this step is all about. And then you're going to need to, um, to put together that scheme. And that means calculate the magnitude of the gradient, which we'll need to divide to uh, divide that, uh, the, that gradient vector by and then calculate that next test point that would be obtained through the gradient descent scheme using the formula for the scheme, which is going to involve that gradient, which is going to involve that magnitude of the gradient. And that gives us a new test point. What we're gonna do is evaluate that test point, um, evaluate F at that test point, and C, compare it to F at our previous point. Okay, there are two there are two options there. Maybe it's less than it. And if it is, then you want to redefine the current x and current y to be that new test value. And then you want to repeat the scheme. If it's not, then you decrease the h. You make that step size smaller. And you don't redefine a, a, a darn thing. So with that uh, smaller step size, you don't redefine anything and you see you continue through the loop, potentially, and assuming that you do, boom, you're back here. You can um, construct the scheme again, but this time with a smaller h, 
and see again and loop around until you do get something that's better. Uh, once you're finished, i.e. you've done enough iterations or um, for whatever reason, maybe your uh, two uh, consecutive estimates are very close together, that's when you take um, your final estimate to be whatever your last values of current X and current Y are. And that is this ending point right about here. So that's really all there is to it. There's a single main loop that uh, will go again and again. We have to keep updating the scheme a little bit. A while loop might be especially fitting here, continuing the loop as long as H is bigger than some value, which is gonna ensure that those estimates are, are close together. Our steps are very, very close together. So that ensures that successes, successive guesses would be very close together. So keep going until H is less than you know, a millionth or something like that. Cool. So hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, take some time and process it. I have a f in there for you to try something that actually does something easier than all of this. Um, I have you trying to do a, a 1D example with just a regular function moving only left and right, depending on the values of the different derivatives. And I think that's going to be really helpful. Um, but when you're ready to extend it, this code right here uh, uh, will put into action a, uh, a multivariable, a two-variable gradient descent scheme. And once you've got that, it's not too hard to take this and make it bigger as uh, the need arises. So um, let's take a look at what I've got here. We've got the initialization up here. Initial um, data, I guess. It's not the right word. I don't know. Initial function. We have our initial step size. We have our Starting value of x and y at 1 and 2 here is what I put it at. Um, we have uh, the different pieces of the uh, gradient here. I've defined as x grad, y grad. So we're defining uh, those partial derivatives with those. And then this is the main loop right here. This is the main loop. We're calculating the gradient. We're checking our current x and current y. Um, by just using the two components of our scheme. And that's what this is right here. Uh, and that gives us a new point to test. And then we check. We go F of those new current test points that we're trying out. And we're seeing if they're less than where we were at before. And if they are, then you redefine it. If they aren't, you'll let H equal H over 2 and you try again. And that's exactly what we put out in that... Uh, um, in that flowchart on the last page. And hopefully when you go through this line by line, it doesn't seem like too bad. The whole thing looks like it fits in about, yeah, 33 lines with lots of white space and comments and stuff. So it's really not a big program, even in two variables. So it should be even less than that in uh, the, the 1D case. So yeah, um, as a final thing here, this is ex easily extendable, as I said, to functions of more than two variables. It's funny, right, because to use this uh, this kind of scheme on a real life problem, oftentimes these problems do take up dozens of variables and that's why you need special schemes and calculus just doesn't cut it, um, at least calculus from first year. This here is our, our latest hack to, to try and solve problems that are really, really tough to solve without anything special. So yeah, we're coming in under 10 minutes here, but that's pretty much all I got to say for that. So I guess with these three videos, um, gradient descent, super important scheme. I think it's really useful uh, to make sure you have that down. It's something that's applicable. It's something that is uh, used very commonly in modern applications. So take the time, learn it well, and, um, and you'll be in good shape. So we're going to take a, a little bit of a, a detour. We're going to talk about one Kind of odd topic that uh, we're supposed to talk about in this course but it's tough because we don't have uh, kind of the math background for it so i have to do a little bit of of um, an introduction to the the concept of pdes we'll talk about how to do what are called uh, finite difference methods to solve them um, but it's going to be a topic that because it's really complicated because you lack the background i'm probably not going to test very heavily on it if at all on the final exam but it might be useful for your knowledge to just get a, a feel for what's happening before you see those concepts in other courses. So that is going to be coming up in the next video, um, which should be up in a couple days. So until then, I bid you all a fond farewell, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.